All right, everyone. So we are now going to start the fun-filled world of Aspen uh, as our uh, software choice at the end of this semester. Um, here, you'll notice right away that my Aspen version is a little bit behind the times compared to the one you use in class. We're at version uh, 8.2. So there might be some things that are a little bit different, but it shouldn't change too much. Um, so for this first video, I'm actually going to show just the one side of Aspen. That's the property side. The fact that we can actually use Aspen to get a lot of thermodynamic data and get a lot of information out of just mixtures and what's happening uh, behind the scenes. Uh, as I mentioned in class, Aspen is a simulator. It lets us simulate real world systems with as accurate of thermodynamics as possible, with as rigorous as calculations as possible. It doesn't replace a, um, a scale up to some extent, but it is very useful for us to understand what can happen uh, in uh, processes as we design them and, and see what the bounds are of those processes and what we can scale up. So to start off with, this is the Aspen interface. Uh, we use Aspen Plus for most of our stuff. Uh, there are different ways you can log into Aspen. You can actually log into Aspen Properties and so forth. It's effectively the same as Aspen Plus. Aspen Plus just gives you a lot more access. If you just don't want to see all that, you can go to the smaller um, uh, logins or startups. But for this purposes, let's go to File. And interestingly enough, you're seeing this come off the screen because Aspen's being a little weird. But under File, if we um, go to File, we will see, and I'm going to have to scroll Aspen aside so you can actually see it. Let's do a little more. There we go. File and say New. Okay, and so then we get popped up the block that we want. Now, like we said in class, there are different templates that we can use to start with Aspen. Each one are set up around specific industries and so forth. Um, but the most common ones to use would be the generic with metric or generic with English. I'm going to start with generic with metric as our startup process. And so as this is running, I'm going to um, uh, just mention that the Aspen environment is broken down into two main areas a properties area and a simulation area. For this video, we're just going to talk about properties because this is going to be what Aspen allows us to do to assess properties and how we set up the basic molecules, the components that we're going to use, and the methods that we're going to use. So let's look at specifications. Uh, and the first thing here, you'll notice again, Aspen tells you what it needs. Everything red with this half circle red says it doesn't have it uh, complete. If you ever see that, that means there's something not complete there. Um, it could be as something as simple as just looking at it, or it can be that there's a component missing, or a, a uh, not filled in, or method not selected, or maybe even your flow chart has things not connected when they're expecting to. So, But uh, this is going to be your guide to knowing what is or isn't filled in. If you ever get confused and don't know what needs to happen next before you run something, you always have this little next input uh, button. I'm hovering over it. Aspen's really nice because when you hover over things, it will tell you what it's missing. Um, I'm going to move this aside again just so you can see, but you hover over, and this next input button uh, can be the uh, saving grace for a lot of troubleshooting if you don't know what's missing or what's going on. So the components. In the components section, we just enter in what it is that we want. Here we can sometimes type in the name of the component that we want, and sometimes we can't. Um, uh, we can actually... Um, if, if you have a longer, comp more complicated name for a component, you sometimes have to go to the Find option. And the Find option, it's not going to be like finding, uh, using Find or Search in Google. It's not going to be adaptive learning. It's not going to guess what you want. It's going to be either you typed it in correctly or incorrectly, and it's good, and it doesn't know. Um, you can choose Begins With, Contains, or Equals Exactly. This is entirely up to you enter in the molecular weight and boiling points and so forth but um, I generally recommend if you know the beginning of the name of the chemical to start with that it'll give you a smaller list to select from and it's easier to uh, review so I'm going to say ethanol fine now and sure enough there's just one thing in ethanol it's called you can see it recognizes this you can say add selected compounds to list say close and we see ethanol here now because the component ID is is Aspen's internal way of referencing these compounds. I don't like this. This doesn't look good to me. And I know 
what um, uh, this is, but this is how it's going to report in all of the reporting. If I want to change it, if I want to make this a more common language term, I can just change it here to ethanol or to Bob or to um, um, IPA, whatever you want to call it. Let's just call it ethanol here. And do you wish to change, rename the component, or delete or replace it? In this case, if I say delete, it's going to actually just delete the entire line. If I say um, um, uh, I don't want to do that, I just want to rename it. So I'm just going to say rename ethanol, and that's it. So now we can go down to methods. And methods here is, is where we have the ability to select what equations of state and uh, thermodynamic systems we're going to use to model the system. We can give ourselves a simplified form of access to all the uh, variable um, properties. For example, we can look at, say, things that are common for the oil gas industry and look at the equations of state that are available there. We can look at ones that you would use um, for water. And we can click select there and see the like steam tables and so forth that would be available there. Um, and this is just this simplified form of an accessing at chemical plants and so forth. If you happen to know exactly what you want to use and you don't mind searching through a long list of stuff, you can go over here and this just gives you every available option. Um, now, selecting the right property can be its own challenge sometimes, um, and that's not going to be something that we're going to really deal with in class. Uh, that's something you adapt and learn over your time in, in uh, engineering. Uh, but suffice to say, for this purpose here, we're just going to uh, start with the Unifac model for ethanol and water. We're going to use that. Okay. And if you don't know what the property is, what it's using, you can highlight over it, and it'll tell you what Unifac is doing. It's using Rita Kwong, equation state, and Henry's law constants. Okay, seems reasonable. So we can go with that. Now, everything else is blue, and so for the standpoint of evaluating properties, we're set. If we click Next, you'll notice everything else is done. Inputs are complete. We can run a property analysis. We can modify anything, enter, or we can go to the simulation environment. I don't need to do any of those because I'm going to show you now the other things you can do. So from analysis of thermodynamic data, you can look here and you can um, look at estimations, regression models, you can do analysis. One of the things I like to do and probably the most useful bit of options here are here. These will generate thermodynamic data and charts and so forth for your reports. So we can click on that. We can click on binary. And then the binary option, we can say what we want to see. You can see a TXY diagram. You can do a PXY diagram or an uh, energy of mixing diagram. Let's do TXY. Uh, and we can look at ethanol and water. We can vary what we want. In this case, we're going to vary. Uh, let's do vary the ethanol, mole fraction. And we can go from 0 to 1, which seems good. And then the pressure we can select here, we're selecting 1 atm or 1 bar is atmospheric. Everything is good. You'll notice over here we can change the conditions that we want. We can do calculating of true components or parent components. Remember from before when we talked about electrolytes in class, this is uh, an area that we can change as well. But once this is all entered in, there's nothing more we have to change. Everything else looks good to us. We can say run analysis. And then we get our uh, phase equilibria for our, our temperature. And you can see here that as we increase uh, the ethanol composition, uh, our temperature is going from 100 degrees down to uh, 79 degrees. And you are seeing the, um, the uh, azeotrope that exists with ethanol water around this range of 0.95. What's nice about this is you can, oh, is you have all this information here. It's available to you, and you can now look at and change things if you want. If I wanted to change this to water basis, you can change the water basis uh, plot. You can change the the Kelvin temperature and um, um, the units that you're wanting to re uh, reply in, or change the pressure uh, units. You have a lot of 
ability and um, variation that you have to change here that's uh, quite useful. Uh, you could even have a lot of editing that you want to do here because uh, once you have this diagram you're able to then go ahead and start interrogating more um, from all what this is. You can actually copy and paste this, add it to Excel charts and so forth. And so uh, this is just one way you can get at uh, some of this information. Let's say you want to zoom in on this area. You'll notice the data points. Maybe we want to zoom into this range of water or um, varying from 30 to 0 to 30 uh, composition. So we can go to our binary input and we can create another range. Let's say we want to go from the lower limit of 0.7 in ethanol to 1 in ethanol. We'll keep the same number of data points and run the analysis. And now we can zoom in even further and see this azeotrope that exists um, in this uh, composition and, and where it's calculating it at. Uh, and so this is, um, in a nutshell, the way we can access this information and, and um, get data uh, from this that we want. And so now you have all this data in this chart form, but let's say we want to know what the actual tables are that we want to manipulate and get that information as well. You can go over here and click results and you'll get the tabulated forms of all the data that was just calculated um, in this. Uh, and you'll see there's a lot of information that's also built up into here um, uh, in these tables. Uh, you have um, the vapor mole fractions, the uh, liquid mole fraction for ethanol and water, You'll have activity coefficients that can be generated as well, um, your uh, and and many other bits of information that you can obtain. If you have units to these that you want to change, you can go here in this data table, select the units you actually want, and report it in those units. So if I go to ATM, you'll see that this is all at one ATM, there's uh, one atmosphere. Um, for a lot of other things where there is no units, you don't have that option, but the nice thing about these generated tables, and especially in the newer forms of Aspen, is it's very easy to go back and forth between units. So even if you didn't set up the units that you'd want in the beginning, you can always change that here um, as it's um, uh, evaluating the, oops. So, and this is just one way of getting at this information. You'll notice with a pure binary um, system, if you had more than two components, you'd actually then have access to a ternary diagram if you wanted to. Um, you can also um, go to different plots by adding them here as well um, as, as other options. So this is um, uh, basically and briefly how you can get a lot of other information from these component mixtures and so forth. Now, of course, we aren't just limited to binary systems. We can also get the pure component thermodynamic data from the Aspen as well. Uh, for example, if we wanted to know thermodynamic data or transport data, any of the data that's basically what the components are based on. And thermodynamic data meaning things like heat capacity, um, you know, your CP or your constant volume heat capacity. Um, you may want to know the free component, um, uh, free energy, the pure component, um, the ideal gas component of the um, uh, of your um, pure component. So you, you can actually get calculate residual properties from here if you so wish. Uh, you can get entropy properties. And what's interesting in all this is this will, you'll get this data from the basis that Aspen uses um, in it. Um, and, so, and so this will be all based upon the elemental um, reference state um, at uh, you know, what, what we've done in class with 298 uh, Kelvin um, on, on the element basis. So... Uh, you can get that information here as well. Now, that can be thermodynamic data. You can also get transport data, meaning things like um, uh, surface tension, viscosity of the system, and, and, and so forth. So you have a lot of extra information here. So let's go to thermodynamic. Let's look at heat capacities. Let's say we want to do the CP. Uh, we can get it for the liquid. We can get it for the vapor phase. We can get it for all the components we have available. Let's say the two components. And then we can ask the pressure range over which we want to see this data set for. Um, 
So again, we'll go from uh, 0 to 100. And we'll run the analysis. And here you'll get the color-coded thermodynamic data for your heat capacities. For water, CP of water, the heat capacity of liquid uh, water and uh, water vapor. You'll have the heat capacity of ethanol, uh, liquid ethanol, and in vapor ethanol. So you can see the trends and the heat capacities that you have in here. And again, you're able to click over here and see what the data is as a function of temperature and pressure. And you can change the units as you desire or whatever makes the most sense for your tables. So there's a lot of adjustment and a lot of power here that um, would make a lot of your work in thermal classes and normal classes in the future um, much simpler. So I think this is just by itself uh, an uh, extremely useful tool is having these Aspen uh, data sets and, and understanding where these are coming from. And you can use this and for setting up your simulation because like I said there's a lot of basic information you have to know about how to set it up but also to evaluate and test the different phase equilibrium and see if the if the thermodynamics are agreeing with reality. So that's a brief summary of what Aspen can do in terms of property analysis. Um, there's a lot more that can be done. You can adjust it in, in terms of understanding uh, some uh, um, in adjusting some of these responses that you want. Uh, you can really start to interrogate uh, the things you get out of this in terms of uh, output. So if we go back to the pure data, we can get uh, generate a lot more uh, information. We can change property methods, compare property methods. There's a lot of things you can do. But I think for the purposes of this, I think we can end it there. And uh, next video, we'll talk about how to do a uh, simulation. So thanks a lot. Bye.